before we get started with the video today guys I want to let you viewers out there know that only a small fraction of you guys currently watching are actually subscribed to my channel so make sure to smash that subscribe button for instant updates about videos that I release and other announcements and also smash that like button to help my channel out enjoy the video yo what is up guys it is Samul here back with another epic 7 YouTube video for you guys and today I'm going to be covering the hell raid queen or last boss of hell raid that a lot of newer and even mid game players struggle to take down now if you guys are looking for a guide for the other four bosses before queen i have another video up on youtube you can check that out it goes in depth about all the bosses all the mechanics and what units you should bring and this vo video is going to be focused completely on the queen because the queen is definitely by far the hardest boss in hell raid so you really need to understand her mechanics and you want to make sure you bring the right units for her now the queen has basically there's a lot of text when you read the skills, right? Like, if I just, like, mouse over it, right, you'll see there's a lot of text. I'm gonna try to dumb it down for you guys so it's a little bit easier. But basically what happens is her passive, right, um, basically your attack, effect resist, and speed um, will decrease as your health decreases. So you want to make sure you have a soul waiver or two to make sure that you're topped off as much as you can because otherwise you're just gonna lose some stats. Also, the queen will also take less effects from CR pushbacks on her. Um, so you want to make sure that she, you know, you don't really rely on CR pushbacks, like your RB, if you're using her in this boss, which she's pretty good in, he won't be CR pushing back um, the boss too much. And basically, um, if you're too low, you'll also get stunned when it's the Queen's turn, so yeah, make sure you're topped off, guys, and don't rely on CR pushbacks, that's basically the uh, gist of this passive. And then you'll see that she has a lot of skills, um, so her basic attack is just an attack that will be single target, and it basically increases skill cooldown. So, let's say you have your Tamarin in the front, it's going to be really hard for her to get her idle form unless you have like an Asaria to um, reset her S3 because she just keeps pushing back um, skill cooldowns. Obviously you can resist this if you get lucky, but um, it's pretty annoying because uh, it might delay your healing. So that's why I recommend one or two Soul Weavers, or you want to have a Knight, especially with like Aureus or something to sit in the front so that they can take the brute of the skill cooldown pushbacks because your healers really need to get their healing off because this boss does a lot of AoE damage. Um, also, basically whenever she's granted a greater buff, um, which we'll see she gets from another passive, um, she's going to attack with an AoE attack that will strip you, so you don't rely too much on like attack buffers and stuff like that. Um, your buffs are going to get stripped one way or another eventually. And you'll see Death Trap is an AoE attack. Um, she only uses this when she's below 50%. Uh, basically what this does is that uh, it will basically strip all of your buffs and then give you decreased defense and healing down and then you know, cleanse her entire team. So it's a very, very powerful skill. She only uses this below 50%. So you want to be really, really careful when you see this skill is ready because this is a big damage and very brutal attack. Um, so after like 50%, when, when the queen is like 40, like 5-ish percent, something like that, you want to start spamming your Arkies because this is where the, the queen fight starts getting very, very hard. And you'll also see queen servant. So <clears throat> this is basically her adds. So at the start of the battle against the queen, um, you'll see that she has four eggs in front of her. When you attack her, two of the eggs will hatch and they'll summon spiders. Now the spiders are pretty easy, you want to make sure you focus them down. Um, nothing really much to it, uh, it's the easiest phase of the boss, but once she hits 50%, she also hatches the other two eggs and summons like hornets. Um, those hornets counterattack um, when, what's it called, you're buffed after being attacked. So whenever like the hornets have a buff, you want to make sure um, you're, you're topped off because they're going to counterattack um, and it's very very annoying. Um, sorry, not, not the hornets having the buff, when the queen is buffed. So you really want to make sure you strip the queen as much as you can um, so the, the hornets don't counterattack you because those hornets do a lot of damage and if your DPS get caught off guard, um, actually what will happen is they will get one shot. So a very easy strategy in this phase is to just save your Arkies and just burst the hornets down or just don't attack the queen at all, which you should. So you don't want to use any AoE attacks, right? Also, um, yeah, this is basically your ad phase, so um, you just want to make sure you kill the adds ASAP. Also, what can happen at 50% when the hornets are up is if the spiders are still alive for some reason, they'll be there with the hornets. You really want to make sure you kill the spiders ASAP. And then next we have the stacking attack and defense buff that happens. So what will happen is at the end of her turn, she gets attack and defense buff. And at the end of the next turn, if she has one of the buffs already, that buff will upgrade into a greater buff. So if she has like a attack buff only, um, the following turn she'll get greater attack buff and a regular defense buff and so forth, right? Um, you really want to make sure she doesn't get into a greater buff if you can. So you want to bring a lot of the spells and strips because once it's greater, it'll actually apply to all her adds. And you'll see that if she actually has a greater attack and greater defense 
the adds become nearly unkillable and do so much damage because they have the greater buffs. So you really want to make sure you're stripping um, the queen whenever she's about to hit greater or is already with the greater buffs because it is just too hard. Also, a big thing about this boss, guys, is when she is inflicted with three or more debuffs, um, she will actually cleanse herself and get an extra turn. So you want to limit yourself to two debuffs. So when you're picking your team, guys, make sure you think very, very carefully about the debuffs you're about to bring. <clears throat> so now that's basically it for the queen's mechanics. Let's get into the team comps. So I really recommend bringing two or three dispels or strippers um, just because in case you get like 15% or something, you want to make sure you have a backup stripper. Um, I think Falconer Clary is a very, very good pick here. Um, Aeros is okay as well, but the problem with Aeros is that he is um, only one buff strip, So, and the queen also always has like two buffs with the attack and defense. Also, when you try to strip when the hornets are up, you're going to get counterattacked by the hornets, so it's kind of annoying. Um, so I think Falconer Clary is better. And you'll see from my Soul Weaver slot, I have Tamarin as always, because Tamarin has a full strip on her S1 when she's in idle form. She has, she's just broken, right? So just bring her if you have her. And then for my second stripper, or third stripper, I guess if you count Tamarin as one, I have Asaria. Asaria obviously pairs very well with Tamarin because I can reset the idle form. And also her S3 will full strip and also apply unbuffable, which actually works on the boss. So I think Asaria is a very, very good pick. So yeah, I'm running those three units as my support slash strip slash healing. And then my main DPS is going to be SSB. So SSB is a very powerful pick because she has a target buff and she also um, has a defense break on her S2 as well for the adds when uh, she counterattacks if it procs. I um, just want to be careful in using her S3 here because, um, yeah, obviously S3 has two debuffs on it and then that means I can't put a defense break up on the boss, otherwise it'll counter. Um, also with my target, right? Um, I'll have to be a little bit careful. Uh, the thing is, the way the boss works is that when you hit her adds, the damage will reflect onto the boss. So you can just stack the debuffs onto the onto the adds especially like defense break and stuff like that, and then only use your strips when you have to on the main boss. Um, also, percent damage like Daydream Joker and Bologna's S1 won't work here, so you have to be careful. Um, they, don't, they don't work on the queen, I think, but they work on the adds. So yeah, just keep in mind, just kill the adds ASAP and you should be fine. Let's get into the battle. So here's the queen fight. Um, so you'll see, like I said, uh, it, everything will start in the egg form, and when I hit the boss once here, You'll see that they'll hatch into the spiders. They look like the first boss, just smaller. Um, so here I'm going to actually reset my Tamarin. And I'll actually hit the boss here with this because I want to get this on cooldown and cycle it as much as I can. And even though it's not a greater buff, the next turn it will be. And hopefully I can land the... Uh, Oh, I didn't land the defense break, but the unbuffable is the more important one. So I landed it. Very, very good. She won't be able to buff herself. Tamron's very good here with Asaria, obviously, because I can cleanse everything. And I'm not going to S3 ever, really. Um, so what I can do here is I can actually hold it for when the boss needs to be stripped again. Um, which I think I will probably do. Because this boss isn't really a race. You just have to be careful. Resisted. It's unlucky. Getting a lot of dual attacks. That is a pretty unlucky stun. But it does happen. I actually don't have my Tamron on Potion Vial. Probably a better choice for this fight. Especially if she's your only cleansing ability, right? So yeah, don't do what I did and hold on to Falcon Aquarius S3. I guess my Falcon Aquarius is pretty fast though. So that's why it seems like I could have gotten another one up. But just to be safe, it's a okay idea, I guess. You'll see the skill cooldown reduction or increase on my Tamarin, so her idle form will be a little bit late. But thankfully I have a Seria with her, so I can always just reset it. I misclicked the boss. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Hit the ad. And yeah, it looks like Asteria is very good here because she can basically solo um, unbuffable the boss if she's fast enough. 
But, you know, I do have Falcon Aquarius just in case the unbuffable misses. And I did land it, and it did res resist the defense break again. So that's that's kind of funny. But Falcon Aquarius is nice here because she's always like that backup strip. And also, she has a lot of healing, right? Because she heals the entire team. So I know it doesn't seem like a lot, because it's like 200-300, but it does add up over time. And it is actually a lot for squishy DPSs. Yeah, this fight does take a while. It is a grind, but um, especially for your first few times doing it, it's the best way to do it is to be safe. Um, I could definitely run like 2 or 3 DPS even, but I'm just showing you guys for the sake of consistency the best teams to run. Because you only kill this once a, you only kill this once a month, right? Anyways, because Hell Raid resets once a month. So you might as well, you know, take your time and do it slowly. I'll give you a rest. So I do have this up, I'm gonna soul burn it so it doesn't get resisted. Get ready. Uh probably didn't need to do that actually because this is up. On my word. Forever. I But you'll see while I'm hitting the ads though, the damage reflects the boss. So that's all you really need to um do in this fight. Until all the ads are dead. Have to be careful here though because if my SSB ends up hitting the boss and lands target, it'll cleanse and counterattack me, which is very annoying. There it is, and you'll see that she cleanses and then counterattacks, right? Now at 50%, you'll see that the boss will summon the other set of adds. This is where the fight gets a lot harder. So you really want to make sure you save your Arkies. Um, and you don't want to do what I'm doing and, and have the greater attack buff up if you can at this time. So next turn, I should be able to get rid of these buffs. Yeah, you'll see the damage here gets pretty crazy. It's gonna hurt. You see it's doing a lot of damage to my team. Very, very scary. I'm gonna sober in this actually to heal. Yeah. Silence is very painful. Falconer has been silenced for super long. Then hopefully this lands. If not, my Falconer can always soul burn the next turn and remove these buffs for me. But I do want to strip this turn if I can. Nice. See, my Falconer could have just done this this turn as well. I'm actually going to soul burn this. I really need to kill these. Hornets ASAP. You really want to kill these uh these wasps ASAP. They, they do so much damage, especially when your defense broken. And I do have S three up, so I get to cleanse everyone finally. Okay, just keep working on the ads, and the fight is pretty easy. Uh, I'm actually gonna, yeah, focus this one. You'll see the the ads are pretty squishy, right, when their defense broken. This fight is actually not bad, as you can see, if you know what the boss does, right? There's a lot of text, so a lot of newer players don't really, you know, understand everything about the boss fight, which is normal. Um, 
There's a lot of unnecessary text in the boss's descriptions, right, as you can see. Like, wow, look at this. <laughs> but you just have to know that there's a certain amount of things you need to focus on, being the buffs that you strip and just killing the adds. That's that's basically it, to be honest. It makes sure you don't stack too many debuffs. If you can do all those three things, you, you're, you'll be fine. It's pretty easy. This is the only problem with SSB though, because uh, once it gets to this part, I can't really S3 on my from my um, Assyria because it lands unbuffable and she just cleanses it, right? And there's no way of me getting past that, so I'm basically relying on my Falcon and Clary at this point, Soulburn, and uh, make sure this lands every time. And yeah, very annoying. Even though I reset my Tamarin's S3, it got pushed back by the Queen because she pushes back cooldowns. Uh, my SSB is on a Wyvern build, so if you're wondering why she's not critting, she's not at 100% crit, that's why. But it really is just a grind at this point, you know? Got pushed back again, it's actually crazy. Just rinse and repeat, Resident Sleeper. Once you kill the adds and there's no adds left, the fight is really, really easy. There's nothing else much to it. I'm actually going to S1 here, try to strip. I do strip because my Tamron has some effectiveness. Very, very nice. And also, yeah, the boss was about to just strip me as well anyways, so all planned, you know. I'll uh, just do this anyways. Defense break. Tamron will attack buff and CR push my team. Oh, defense break didn't land. Unlucky 15%. Probably should have sobered that in hindsight. But I guess I'll just arc, you know. And I know this fight is taking long. There are faster team comps you can run, but this is like the most consistent way to do it, to be honest. Uh, I'm actually going to reset my... Falcon and Clary here to make sure I can defense break because I want to get out of here. I do land the defense break anyways though. And she should die here, right? With the SSB's dual attack. And there we go, guys. I know that was a grind. A very, very long battle. But that's how you kill the queen. Um, if you guys just want a summary of what to focus on, like I said before, just make sure you are stripping the buffs. Don't let them reach greater. Um, having just the regular attack and defense buffs stealable, but... Um, if you can bring like something that has unbuffable, like a Seria, it's very, very easy to deal with. Also, make sure you are killing the adds ASAP. Um, you want to make sure the spiders die before 50%, and you want to save your Arceus for when the Hornets are up because they do a lot of damage. And also maintain your debuffs on the boss. Limit them at 2. If you have 3 or more debuffs on the boss, you'll cleanse, and then she will counterattack and just make your life terrible. So just keep those 3 things in mind, and you should have an easy time killing Hell Queen. Uh, as always guys, thanks for watching, and make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It actually helps my channel out a lot, and I will see you guys next video. Good luck killing the queen, guys!